Hello everyone and welcome back to Acting. This week what we are going to do is continue our journey through the acting process and we are going to focus on tactics. Tactics are the ways we convince people to do what we want. Now how is that different than action? What are your dominant tactics and how can you use those tactics as a way of understanding yourself and your character? Well we're going to go over that. So let's get started. Have you ever walked up to a parent and said, hey, and really what you wanted was your parent to do something for you? And your parents stopped and they looked at you and they went, what do you want? And you panic and freak out. Well, what you've just done is you tried out a tactic. That tactic then didn't work. And that moment of panic was that knowledge of you knowing that tactic no longer worked and you're gonna have to switch to a different tactic. Tactics are the ways we convince people to do what we want. Now an action is what I want you to do. The tactics are the way I convince you to do it. See, I don't just tell you what I want. When you want your parents to let you stay out late or to give you money, you don't tell them you want it. You kind of allow them to come to the conclusion themselves. Or you try to get them ready or in a position where you can ask and they will give you what they want. Tactics is the game plan. Tactic is your way or method of manipulating somebody. Some people try to flatter you. Number 12, have you been working out? Ah, oh, you can tell. No. Some people charm. So they'll walk up and they'll go, hey, how's it going? And they're relying on their charm to get what they want. All right, listen, I didn't want to have to do this, but you leave me no choice. Here comes the smolder. Now, some people try to seduce other people. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Some people bully. They just walk up and take what they want or they kind of threaten violence. Some people try to befriend. Hey, I came up, uh, came up with a great name for our car. Oh yeah? Get this. You're Arcot Ramathorn, Ram, and I'm Rod Farva, Rod. Car ramrod. Car ramrod. You get it? Yeah, I got it. Rabbit. Say car ramrod. I got a Plymouth Voyager. Say car ramrod. Vermont. Some people kind of pout. Sorry to disappoint you. Guess I'm too dull to be around. Can't blame you for moving away. Some people just kind of throw a tantrum and have a crisis and then the other person needs to calm them down and the calming them down gets them what they want. <laughs> money, please. Oh, no, no, there's no money. Oh, my bad, no problem. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine, um, I'll just destroy this office. Oh, hey! <clears throat> money, please. Money, please. Uh, I, ben. Give her some money, it's easier. Some people want to be a victim and, and, and they will pretend that they are being hurt. Ah! I'm sorry, mama, I wanted to tell you. You all gallivant with your fancy foosball friends at school while I'm sitting here all day with nobody to keep me company except Steve? Other people walk up and they barter or bargain. Someday. And that day may never come, I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. See, all of those things are different tactics. Now, there are way more because every person responds to different tactics. And you as a human usually switch up your tactics as soon as you realize something isn't working, right? So in that scenario I gave you earlier, if you walk up to your parents and you say, hey, and your parent goes, what do you want? 
see flattery or the schmoozing, that didn't work. So now you have to try something else. So now maybe you want to make them feel guilty. How come every single time I go to talk to you, you won't even let me compliment you or I just can't be happy to see you? See, what you're doing is making them feel bad so that they can give you what they want. Your tactic shifted based on what they did. And so tactics really change mostly based on the other person's reaction. So if I'm being successful with my tactic, I'm not gonna change it. What I'm gonna do is keep going with it. But as soon as I meet resistance, I'll shift or alter or move. See, what I'm doing is testing the waters and most of the time, you don't even realize that you're doing it. Most of the, you just think you're communicating, right? Or you're responding to these signals, but you're not thinking about manipulating someone. But you did walk into that conversation with a goal, right? You walked into that conversation with the goal of getting them to do what you want. These dominant tactics that you use, these, these tactics that you continuously use and have become part of you, you've used them for so long you don't even think about them anymore. But acting is the study of you. See, you have a dominant tactic, and a dominant tactic is your go-to tactic, the thing that you use all the time. Now, you develop that because the more you've asked for something from someone, the more you use that specific tactic, the more success you've had. So pretty soon, because that tactic always works, you start using it with everyone. Now, that tactic won't always work with everyone because some people don't like certain tactics. They don't like being manipulated or knowing they're being manipulated, but everyone is manipulated. And so what you do is you have a backup, right? You have a backup tactic just in case this one doesn't work. And usually you've had some success with that one. Now, if that one doesn't work, then you move into your third and final. Usually most of us only have about three major tactics that we use. And then that one is the one where this is your final thing that if you use it, it's, it's your last, the last card you can play. Once that happens, usually people just cut and run. It's not worth trying to convince you to do something. And they've already, they, they feel too, they feel too gross, like they're using you at that point, right? So they just kind of leave the situation alone. Other people are really, really good at a bunch of different tactics. But those people, people who are good at different tactics and have a bunch of them, usually grew up in a situation or work in a situation where they have to navigate a bunch of different personalities. And because they have all of these different personalities all around them, they are constantly having, just to survive, they're constantly having to know exactly how to talk to you and how to talk to you and how to talk to you because you're all different. Right? So they're really good at reading people and then kind of figuring out what tactic to use with that person. And that's a survival trait, right? So that's what a tactic is. But how you use it in acting is you have dominant tactics, but so does your character. Your character is different than you. Your character is not going to do the same things you do because you're different people, right? And because you're different people, you're going to use different tactics when talking to people, especially depending on who you're talking to. So maybe your dominant tactic is to charm. You smile and you lay on compliments and you are very, very charming. But maybe your character likes to shame people. So they will constantly try to make the other person feel ashamed of not doing what you want. Or maybe what you do is you, you yourself walk up and try to make yourself feel helpless. You go, no, look, I'm, I'm all out of options and I'm, I'm really stressed. Can you help me? See, what you're actually doing you think you're asking for help, but what you're really doing is setting up a situation where the person you're talking to can be a hero. So if the person you're talking to likes helping, they, they get a lot of joy from helping or, being, or, or saving people, then you will constantly put that person in that position. Or maybe you pout and you go to a corner and you just stay quiet, or your character does. 
and you wait for the person to come to you. And then they're trying to cheer you up. And the only way to cheer you up is to give you what you want. Now, maybe you bully somebody. You walk up and you just met you threaten them with violence. You decide, look, you're going to do this or I'm going to hurt you. Or maybe your character barters with people. Hey, I'll give you this if you give me this. Now, there are so many ways that you can talk and communicate and manipulate people, but tactics are those ways. Now, everybody is different, every single personality is different, and you're going to gravitate to different ones based on your life experience. But because that's true for you, that's also true with your character. So what you can do is in the scene, now that you know your super objective and your action, I need stability. How do I get that? I need you to give me $5 so I can use that $5 to get whatever I need, right? But now what I'm going to do is, let's say I would normally do these three tactics. Well, in this scene, my character isn't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try out three new techniques, three new tactics that are not like mine. And I'm going to try them out. I'm going to write them in the script. This is the section where I'm going to try it out. And I'm going to let you tell me if it's working or not. And so when you do that, what you're doing is letting the other person, you're really trying to convince your scene partner to do something. You're trying to manipulate that scene partner, and when it doesn't work, you are going to switch your tactic. And what you're doing is making your scene partner the most important person in the scene for you. Why? Because you can't get what you want without them. And that way, your audience is not seeing you. They're seeing the character. And so you're helping yourself grow, but you're also allowing the story to be told the way it should. Now, sometimes your character and your tactics are the same. Great. But what if they're not? Don't you want to have the ability to change it up? That's what technique uses, right? That's what technique does. Technique allows you to take your choices and have command over them. I don't want you to walk up and just insert your tactics onto the character. I want you to have the technique to be able to make those choices for yourself. All right. So what I want you to do this week is first, I want you to look at yourself and decide and figure out what your dominant tactics are. What are your three go-to? Just do, start with three. Maybe you have a bunch, but what are your top three? How do you manipulate people? And really think about it. Look at all the situations in your life. Pay attention to yourself this week because every day you need something from someone else. So how do you get that? What do you ask? How do you ask? What do you do? And then figure it out, write it down, talk about why. If you can, even write down why you think you develop that. And here's the scary part for you, but the most important part then I want you to share it with us. I want you to upload your response so that we can see it, so that we can also learn from it. Acting is the study of you. How do you work? But also, it's the study of human beings. How do other human beings work? And guess what? Human beings are selfish. They do things that they're not proud of. But if you're ever going to be a truly great actor, you have to be able to be vulnerable. You have to share those things with us, with an audience, with yourself, in, in, in hopes that you can learn and grow. Because if you're able to do it, and someone else does it, and someone else does it, then we can all look at the ways, the true ways we all use tactics, and we can learn from them. Then we can help expand what our possibilities are. Maybe you don't like the way you manipulate somebody. You don't like that. Well, you can change it once you know about it. But a lot of times we don't think about how we're doing it or why we're doing it. it just became part of us, right? And so now is your time to be able to do that. How do you work? How do other people work? I want you to upload and share what your dominant tactics are and if possible, why you think you developed them. 
and then I want you to read and learn from other people's. And especially if they don't, if they have a tactic you don't know about or you never thought about, ask them, talk about it, learn, grow. That's how we, that's why taking a class is so important, so that we can learn from other people too, because you help me grow. I'm your teacher, but I still learn from you all the time. Every time you upload an assignment, I learn from you. So, I can't wait to see what you share, and hopefully I can grow too. All right, everyone. I'll see you soon.